again and welcome to my vlog. For today's video, I'll be helping you how to accomplish the online application form for your Australian tourist or visitor visa. So this application is for those applying under tourist stream or yung mga self-funded and if may guarantee or not the entire cost of the trip. For example, yung accommodation lang yung is sponsor sa yo. And this tourist stream has a higher chance of approval since self-funded ka and you have the capacity to pay for your trip. To start, first is to log into your email account, which we have already accomplished on my previous vlog. But for those who don't have an email account yet, you can check my other videos and I have already put the link on the description box below. And yung mga meron ng email account, let's go! Simula na natin! I'll be sharing my screen again so you can follow and see what I'm doing. So I am now already sharing my screen. Let us paste the link again and we will prompt to the login account. Type in your username and your password. Once done, click the login button on the lower right portion of the screen. After that, you will be prompted that your login is successful. Then hit continue. You will now be prompted onto the next page. Click the new application link. And on the next page, choose visitor that is the type of visa we are applying under that choose visitor visa 600 on the first page is the terms and condition it will ask you if you have read and agreed to the terms and condition you can read it thoroughly or in the meantime we can just choose yes and then hit the next button on the next page you will be asked for your current location whether outside or inside australia just click yes since this tutorial is for someone who haven't been to Australia yet. Under that, you have to choose your current location. Let's choose Philippines. And for legal status, choose citizen. For the purpose of stay, select the tourist stream since that is our purpose, tourism and family visit. On the text box, give details of the significant dates that you will need to be in Australia. So let me type, visit family on September 30, 2023 to attend birthday of uncle until October 10, 2023. Under group processing, let's choose no since we are an individual applicant. While under the special category, also choose no then click the next button on the next page you will have to input your details please be ready with your passport and other id that you might need like the national id so let's type the family name given names and choose your sex or gender for the date of birth click the calendar on the right side of the text box and it will let you choose the date of your birthday Next is the passport number. Let me just input a made-up passport number. And for country of passport, I will choose Philippines. Same thing as the nationality of passport holder. We will choose Philippines too. And after that, let's input the date of issue. Same thing, we have to click the calendar on the right side of the text box. Also do the same on the date of expiry. For place of issue slash issuing authority, just type the DFA branch where your passport was issued. You may check it on your passport just to be sure. For national ID card, if you already have your ID, choose yes. Under it, click the add button. Then type the needed details such as your family name, given names, identification number, country of issue, date of issue so our national id doesn't have an expiry date so just leave it blank once done click the confirm button for the next one pacific australia card let's just choose no so place of birth type in your place of birth and also the province country of birth let's choose again philippines for the relationship status, choose whichever is appropriate on your case. If single, choose never married. 
For other names, click yes if you do have, then input the details below. Click no if there is none. For citizenship, just check if the country inside the parentheses is the country who issued your passport, then click yes. For the next question, if you are citizen to any other country, you may say yes, and if not, just choose no. For previous travel to Australia, choose no. And has this applicant previously applied for a visa to Australia? Let's just click no. Under the grant number, just click no. Other passport or documents for travel, click no. Other identity documents, for this one, you can choose yes and then type whatever ID you have. The choices are marriage certificate, birth certificate, driver's license, and other. You can input all the IDs that you have, especially the government-issued ones. And for the health examination, just click no. Once done, hit the next button, critical data information. For this page, all you have to do is to check and confirm if the details are correct. And if they match, then you can just click the yes button and click next. We will now go to the next page, travel companions. So let's just choose no since this is an individual applicant. Then click the next button. Going to the next page, contact details. Country of residence, choose Philippines. So for department of office, we will choose Philippines, Manila. For the residential address, input the country. Under the address, input your house number, street number, until the barangay. Then, input your town and city. Next is the province. And last is the postal code or zip code. For contact number, enter the local code like 63, then the rest of the number. You can input one contact number and leave the rest blank. For postal address or mailing address, just click yes if same as the residential. If not, provide another mailing address. Under email address, this is auto-generated through the email address you use to create the email account. So let's just click the next button. For the next page, authorize recipient. Since this is again a DIY visa application, let's click no. It means that you will be the one to receive all the correspondence coming from the Australian immigration. And also again, you have to confirm the email address. So let's just click the next button to proceed on to the next page. Non-accompanying members of the family unit. So for this page, all you have to do is input all the details of your family member not going to Australia. Choose yes. You can input the name of your parents, uncle, grandparents, cousins. But for me, you can just input all your first degree family member. Then click the add button. Choose the relationship that you will input. For example, parent. And then their family name, given names, sex, date of birth, and country of birth. After that, click the confirm button. I will just only add one family member. You may go back to it after we're done here. So I will be clicking the next button. On the next page, entry to Australia. So if you're planning to enter Australia on more than one occasion, you may choose yes. And if not, just choose no. For me, I will choose yes. Then you have to choose the length of stay in Australia. You can choose up to three months six months or 12 months just to be safe let me choose the three months only then for the plan arrival date choose when is your plan to arrive in australia and on to the next plan final departure date if you are planning to enter australia for multiple times choose the last 
or final date that you will leave Australia. So if you already know when you're planning to return to Australia, just click the add button and then choose the date of your second arrival and your departure date. Then give the reason why are you coming back to Australia. I will input, I will come back to Australia to spend Christmas holiday with my family and click the confirm button after. I will just only add one but you can input more dates. Under study while in Australia, for now let's choose no. Then under relatives, friends, or contact in Australia. If you do have one of those, click yes and then add their details. Just input their relationship to you, the contact details, residential address, contact telephone number, email address, and also their residency status in Australia. Once completed, click the confirm button and then click the next button. We're now on to the next page, Visa Applicant's Current Overseas Employment. Input your employment status and fill out the necessary details such as the organization, start date with current employer, address, contact number, office email address, then click the next button. So I'm inputting this sample information. Once done, click the next button. We are now on the final support page. For this one, just give the details how the applicant's stay in Australia will be funded. You can choose self-funded or you can choose support by other person, current overseas employer or other organization. I will choose supported by other person and then for the type of support, I will choose accommodation. Then on the text box, write what are the funds the applicant have available to support your stay in Australia. I will input salary, savings, and stocks, for example. Then under relationship to applicant, give the details of the person that will provide support to you once you are in Australia. So again, click the relationship to applicant, give the family name, given names, country, and their address in Australia. Once done, click the next button and we will now be on the health declarations page. For this page, all you have to do is declare if you have lived to other country for more than three months. Do not include Australia and if you have intention to enter a hospital or healthcare facility, if you have intention to work, study, or train to be a health worker, and also to work, study, and train within aged care or disability care while in Australia. It also asks if you have other health issues such as tuberculosis, or if you have any abnormality on your chest x-ray. Another question is if you are gonna require treatment or medical follow-up regarding your blood disorder, cancer, health disease, HIV infection, kidney disease, mental illness, pregnancy, or other respiratory disease. So I will choose no for everything. And for example, I'll choose yes. You just have to provide additional details regarding that. And it doesn't mean that you have a lower chance of approval if you will answer yes. You just have to be honest because they have ways to know if you are telling the truth or not. So just to be safe, answer honestly. Then once done, click the next button. We will now be on character declaration. Under this one, you will be asked if you have committed a crime or any offense so read it carefully one by one so if you haven't done anything wrong you can just choose no to everything once you're done click the next button and on the next page visa history 
you will be asked if you have other visas from other countries and also in Australia. Choose yes and then give further details on the text box. For example, I'll type has a US visa and Japan visa valid until 2029. On the next question, you will be asked if you have not complied with the visa condition. For example, you have exceeded your stay or has the applicant ever had a visa for Australia or any other country refused or cancelled? Choose the appropriate answer and if your answer is yes, just provide the details. If no, choose no. Once done, click the next button. We will now be on the page under declarations. So for this page, they are just making sure if you have understood all the terms and conditions especially when it comes to visa and if you have provided the complete and correct information. In addition, they want you to commit that you agree not to study or train for more than three months because you are allowed to study in Australia for a maximum of three months under a visitor visa. Beyond that, you have to apply for a student visa. So for this page, what we have to choose is yes for all and then click the next button we will now go to the review page all the information you input on the previous page and your answer to the questions will be here so you have to review it carefully check the spellings if they are correct and also all the dates because if there is one incorrect information it will affect your visit to Australia. You might be refused to enter the country. So double check if you have triple check all the information that is needed. If there is an error and you have to correct your answer, just go back to the previous page. If none, click the next button and you will be directed to the attached documents. On this page, you have to upload the required documents to support your visa application. You can also input recommended documents. Under the required documents are their travel documents, national ID if you have chosen yes, and evidence of applicant's previous travel. You can input here your passport, entry stamp, visas, under the recommended documents, it's better if you could upload at least one for each. For example, for the family composition form. After you're done, you can attach it here. For evidence of plant tourism activities in Australia, you may create a sample itinerary of what you will do while in Australia. Under evidence of financial status and funding for visit, you could upload bank statement, credit card statement, life insurance statement, and other funding sources that you could provide. For invitation from family, friends, or organization, you can attach a letter of invitation. And under this, you could also add a cover letter to make your application stronger. You could elaborate what your intention in going to Australia and that you have funding to support your stay and you will not overstay since you have other commitments in your home country or the Philippines. For evidence of current employment or self-employment, you could attach your COE and also again ITR, payslip, and for self-employment, all the supporting documents that will prove that you are self-employed. You could attach a maximum of 60 files. I will attach a file on each required document and then hit the next button. So you will be prompt to submit application page. If you are ready to submit, click submit now. If not, just click the go to my account so that you can review again or attach additional documents. For the meantime, I will show you what it looks like if you click the Submit Now button. So it will prompt you to the Make a Payment page. It will show your reference number, your last name, given name, and the amount that you have to pay. For Australian tourist visa, you have to pay 150 Australian dollars. There are four payment options. 
you can pay through debit or credit card all you have to do is input your address and card details you may choose paypal there is a surcharge of 1.52 dollars if you will choose this option other option is the union pay and the last one is the australian bank account if you have paid and submitted your visa application you will receive a letter notifying you that your visa application is received and after 24 to 48 hours you will also receive another email requiring you to submit a biometric if you want to know how to schedule a biometric appointment you may watch my next vlog and we're done you have already completed the online application form all you have to do now is to upload your primary requirements supporting documents and pay the visa fee once you have lodged your visa application you will receive an email 24 to 48 hours after that requiring you to submit a biometric it's the finger scan and facial photograph i have already uploaded another video regarding that so you could schedule an appointment for your biometric collection I hope this video helped. Don't forget to like and share this to your family and friends who has plans to go to Australia. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified for another visa application tutorial. Have a nice day, everyone! See you later, Chingu! Bye-bye!